Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> well, wait a minute. You're going to edit this. I said if you yeah, take that out, you'll have we'll, a full We'll take it out and post. Stream. Right now, we're celebrating my 
father's 90th birthday. Now, I think everybody in the room... I think everybody in the room knows who, who Tom Kelly is, whose actual name is John Thomas Kelly, who is my father, and whom I have never heard addressed once as John. So, and uh, in case there are people in this room that don't know who I am, I am his oldest son, Jerry, and some might say the best looking. <laughs> so on this, on this occasion of my father's 90th birthday, I'm going to have a little address of welcome. This will be very short because there's nothing worse than a guy that keeps talking while the food's ready. Plus, my sisters threatened me if I spoke too long. So, I want to give you a quick bio on my dad, who turned 90 on Thursday, August 14th. He left his home in Ireland as a young man, 23 or 24, 23 years old for a foreign land, which is this land now, to make a way for himself, to make a new life. He left his, his home and family and came to, the, came to the States following his older brother, Joe, Sean's, Sean's father. Oh, yes, thank you. And um, he met that girl like every guy in the room knows, and it's that girl that he met that girl. Flora Cardinali. And they raised eight kids. And, you know, I'm not going to fill in all these spaces with anecdotal comments. I just think that um, I would like to point out that this, this nine year old guy has had all of life's experiences that come with leaving your home and family. He never saw his folks alive again when he left because he couldn't get back until after they had died. And I think the part about raising eight kids, you know, if, you're, if you have any kids of your own, I think you can imagine what that involves. And they weren't all angels, obviously, except for maybe, maybe me. <laughs> and then, uh, one thing that my father did, and we learned, all learned a lot from my father, it's all the, the, every one of his eight kids uh, appreciates the life's lessons that we learn from him. And I asked for some comments from my siblings, which I'm going to present very briefly. So now I've only been speaking about two minutes, and it's only going to be about one more minute. They won't be sick of me when I'm done. And uh, one thing that my father did was he cared for his wife over ten years while she descended into dementia. He became her full-time caregiver. And so that's a remarkable thing for someone to do. And I will quickly refer to some of these comments that were made by a couple of my siblings concerning the things that we've learned from, from my dad. And, um, yeah, well, I only, I only, I only kept the good ones. There are really only a few because uh, uh, they mostly say the same thing about how you appreciate a guy as he gets older if wisdom develops in him. And all of us, I think, feel that <laughs> wisdom comes with age, but it doesn't have to. I know plenty of crotchety old guys who got hardened with age. Are missing that wisdom that they should have developed. And I hope that I'm not going to be one of them, but I'm afraid they might be. So I can get there. <laughs> well, I've got a long way. We've got a long way to go yet. <laughs> I have to keep checking back with you. So, uh, briefly, a few comments. I'm looking for uh, what my sister Suzanne wrote, which was very nice. Suzanne wrote that 
she learned the value of forgiveness because she writes that one thing of many that dad has taught me is and was the value of forgiveness. When I never thought I had it to give, in my darkest and most angry days, I learned the most valuable life-giving lesson. Thank you for teaching me and us this compassion. Which is a wonderful thing to hear said about <coughs> Kathleen wrote this morning, Kathleen, probably the only guy on earth that calls her Kathleen Kitty. In case you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> she wrote that at age 50, she consciously, I'm, fair, I'm condensing this a little bit, she still continues to seek strength and direction from my father whether it's something that goes back to when she was a teenager or something from this last week. And he has quietly and gently instilled her with wisdom and strength. And she sums this up in a comment that I agree with. And I thought about this after I read it. Because I don't think you could say this about too many people. I will sum up my admiration into his being non-judgmental. My dad does not judge those around him, ever. No harsh words of judgment are spoken about others, ever. And you know, I agree with that. It's amazing. Amazing. So, if I had a glass in my hand, I would hold it up and ask for a toast. My dad. So now that we've we've had these these tender remarks, it's every man for himself. <laughs> uh, this is a brief history. My wife and I just uh, moved, and I found a little strong box that had some mementos in it. And uh, what I found was a history of John Thomas Kelly, Uncle Tom. Hmm. Yeah. Now I tied it too tight. What we have, and this is a, a gift to, uh, to Uncle Tom, is the Kellys in America, 1928, 1930. My father, Michael Joseph Kelly, and Nell Kelly came to the United States. Uh, Nell eventually moved back. Uh, my father stayed. Uh, during World War II, which my father served in the Pacific Theater, uh, Uncle Tom, still living in Ireland, was uh, 20 at the time. And what I have here, surprisingly, is the Irish food ration book. Uh, and in Ireland, they didn't call it World War II, they called it the emergency in their typical understated way. Yes. We fast forward to 1947, and... Uh, Uncle Tom writes my father about making arrangements for his passage to uh, the United States. That's uh, February of 1947. By October, I have a document that says John Thomas Kelly has arrived safely in the United States and is in good hands. And that's October. And being the amb ambitious young man he is and was, and still is, actually. He's probably younger than I am. Um, he was already working by the end of 1947 for the Smith Paper Company, which I kind of worked for, Schweitzer, well, do we now, but it was originally Smith Paper, then Schweitzer. And he was paying U.S. taxes for $48. So they got him early. So, <laughs> so I have a few other mementos in there, and that's from 
my side of the family, Maureen, Erin, and my wife, Catherine, and this is for you. Where's our MC? Speakers are all done. <laughs> I was in the United States Army in about three years during the Korean War. I wasn't even a citizen. So when I got out of the Army, I was a citizen. I didn't ask any questions. I just became a citizen. Wow. 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 Now, I think. The speakers are done. <laughs>